So, you're looking for the Genshin Killer. You've been searching it up on YouTube and you're wondering if Wuthering Waves is it. Well, let me show you something right now. Oh, that's right. It's a motorbike boy. This game has some awesome music. It's got some real cool attacks. It's got summons that you can pull in and battle enemies. It's got some interesting new takes on the gotcha game systems. But is this going to be the Genshin Killer? Let's have a chat. Let, let's have an honest chat about it. I want to go over some of the main systems. I want to go over some of the main things that I'm seeing. I want to go over the characters. I want to go over if this is something you should actually care about. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Genshin Killer. Genshin's a good game. Like, for the people that want Genshin. But let me explain one thing. When I started Genshin, I thought it was going to be more combat, more bosses. I thought that the Spiral Abyss was just the beginning. And they've built a game around minigames. It is not the game I thought it was going to be or expected. And there's a lot of people like me that are not happy with Genshin. So for me, Wuthering Waves probably is the Genshin killer. But for people that like Genshin Impact and they like the story, it probably isn't. It probably won't have as good of a story. It probably won't have um, as deep of lore. But if you're into combat, if you want to fight, the vibe is, yeah, this is probably going to be better. But there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of different things in the game that um, are very familiar. It's a gacha game with different characters. And in order to ascend them, I need to use my energy and I need to get my stuff and I have to put my effort in and my, my time in to ascend them. And there's only so many characters that I can ascend before I run out of resources. Same thing goes with the weapons. There's only so many weapons I can get. And there's artifact type sets. This is a really cool system. Like, I understand there's going to be some, some differences. If you want a new game to play, if you want something to do, I think that for a few months... Wuthering Waves will be the Genshin Killer. It will be the Honkai Star Rail Killer because everyone's going to jump in on the hype. But it can only be the Genshin Killer long term if it is actually good long term. If we unlock all these things and the characters are amazing. If, if, if the map opens up and there's awesome things to do. If these bosses just keep being amazing. If the music keeps being amazing. If they keep adding challenges and things to do. This game could be the, the killer. But it is also not revolutionary in a lot of ways. It is a gacha game. And if you don't like gacha games, you're not going to like this game more than Genshin. If you do like gacha games, I think this one has a lot of potential. If you do like combat, I think this one has a lot of potential. But I want to go over some of the main stuff here. That's kind of my long TLDR is... It's going to be good. I think it'll steal some market share for a short period of time. But it's up to them to steal it long term. So let's talk about it. The map. The world. Looks pretty good. We've got some areas that have more color than others. This is, you know, one example. Let's teleport somewhere else so you can get a vibe that not everywhere looks exactly the same. I think that overall, it's good enough for me. I look at the water. I look at this world. I am Happy with it. I think that Genshin is a lot more vibrant. That is for sure. But I am not going to cry about this world and how it looks. As for the characters. I personally like the character models more than Genshin Impact. In the sense I like the kind of modern style. But I don't think that every design is better than Genshin. You know, I don't look at every single character and I'm like, oh, they're just better. Some of them look pretty generic overall. They don't look amazing, but... I just like this art style, the sharper features, the more modern or masculine type features. I like it a lot more, but I like everything I'm seeing so far. Uh, I'm really liking everything I'm seeing so far. Um, I think that for me, I care about the kit and the stats and what they can do. And a lot of the kits have quite a bit of nuance to them. There's a lot of different things going on. Each character you know, some of them are counter characters, some of them are fast attacking characters, some of them you need to use all your different abilities to make them pop off, and, and some of them are quick swap, like, 
it, it's still just like every other gacha game. There's some characters that are going to be good, some that are going to be bad. It, it, there's, it, like, honestly, what matters more for me is if I take this character and I take this weapon, are there cool things for me to fight and use it on? Am I going to be challenged? Am I going to care about the game? Let's chat about that. Just over here, straight ahead here, is the Abyss, or, 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 or something like the Abyss. This is one of the systems that I've just unlocked, and um, it's fine, all right? It's nothing revolutionary. Uh, I guess I gotta probably teleport it there, but it's nothing revolutionary. It's something we've all seen before. Harder and harder waves that, unless you ascend your characters, you won't be able to beat. But this is essentially the same idea as, like, the Abyss. It's going to get harder and harder. Floors go deeper and deeper. You get rewards for completing it based on how quickly you do it. But it's pretty cool. That being said, they also start throwing in some bosses. And the rumor is, because I haven't unlocked yet, the bosses have different move sets or, or additional sets or additional phases. Um, but I haven't got there yet. I haven't unlocked all the different stuff. So... That's pretty cool. There's also this hazard zone. So if we look at this right now, what's in game, there's like the basic floors here. So there's like, you know, four floors for each of these. And then we've got these ones here. That's another four floors each. There's also a roguelike system that I haven't quite unlocked yet. Um, don't know how hard it gets. Don't know how crazy it is, but there is a whole other system there. I cannot tell you if these systems will be the Genshin killer until I put a lot more time into them and play them. But most likely... It won't be revolutionary and crazy. It might be harder than Genshin Impact. Um, but if we start looking at like Endgame and 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 Genshin Killer revolutionary, I would say that Honkai Star Rail, the way they have continued to add new stuff. There was MOC, and then they added more MOC, and then they added Pure Fiction, the simulated universe, and then there's a new world, and then a new game mode that that t turned it. The only way Withering Waves beats Genshin is if they take these systems they've already created and they just go more, another one, a different boss, add some something else, add a mechanic, add some depth. Um, because if it's just this, it's gonna it's gonna feel the same. I run around, I I do the world, and then every week I do my abyss or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? This is the wrong screen. This is the right screen. Um, and so if you want more Genshin. There is a situation where Wuthering Waves is just more Genshin. Or, 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 or like a similar vibe to Genshin. It's something to do in between. But if they can nail the bosses. Like some of these bosses are so interesting to me. They're so cool. And um, if they can just continue to double down on these things. And, and, and make them uh, challenging and exciting. And give me a reason to fight. That's cool. Character progression, all of this stuff is, like, identical to any of the other gacha games I've been playing. Um, the open world, this stuff is, is, is pretty similar. They've got some good, some good movement stuff here. I can do my own little movements and dashes and double jumps and glides. It's all similar. The one thing I will say about the open world, though, is sometimes it feels a little bit sparse. Sometimes there's not as many enemies as you would like or as many little chests and things as you would like. But it's still a very similar vibe to Genshin Impact, to Tower Fantasy kind of thing. But I wanted to address this, okay? Um, overall, I think that this game, current state, is absolutely better than Tower Fantasy, and it's not even close. When I played Tower Fantasy within the first within like the first hour or so, I knew, uh-oh, this game might be in trouble. This game. I said, oh, this game has some potential. I can tell right away with games, does it feel good? Does the movement feel good? Can I dash around? Can I do these different things? Does it feel fluid? Yes. Does the combat feel interesting? Yes. This character functions different than this character, functions than this character, and I want to learn them all and I want to test them all. I think it's really cool. But the one thing I didn't anticipate being so excited about is this system so what is this what is this right here it is an echo i killed those enemies and they have left behind an echo this is essentially um like a pokemon type system i collect him boom i've now collected these echoes 
I could go in and I can alter my echo choices. So, an echo is kind of like an artifact or a relic. It's got different substats on it, all right? And each one, even if it's the same enemy, can have different substats. This has defense, this has attack. But the effect, the set effect, is going to be the same. That being said, if we go in here, i got to find a, a, an example of it really quickly. If we look at... Uh, this enemy, let's say, or, or this enemy, this is a Havoc Dread, Dread main. This is like a, a, a low tier one, okay? This is a low tier one doing 105, uh, damage. Look at this one. This one's doing 158 damage. So this is a higher tier one, it's a leveled up one and stuff. The different rarities, you can just see in this one, this is a, a blue rarity one. This does three attacks, 231 damage. This one does 264 damage. So, you can fight these enemies, get rarer versions with better substats, potentially, and you can farm them up indefinitely. If I go down here, and I was to go fight this boss, there's a boss down here, okay? Even if I don't want to use my energy to fight this boss, I could still kill it and see if it'll uh, drop an echo. Which is, I think it's pretty badass. So I could go all the way down here. I could start the boss fight. I could kill it. He's just chilling down there. And if he drops the echo, W. That's great. And if he doesn't, I can come back in 10 minutes and do it again. Or 5 minutes and do it again. And so, while it's annoying needing energy to level up and ascend all your different characters and, and ascend all their weapons, one of the big progression points in the game is essentially free. Now, that doesn't mean infinite, because if I look at this, and I want to upgrade this, there are resources to level up my um, my little wolf here. Um, I can level up these units, okay? And I'll just show you this. I'll waste it. And every five levels, I can strengthen it, okay? So now I've unlocked this. If I want to get this substat... I have to use a tuner, and these are finite. They're not finite. I, I think you can farm them long term, um, but it is something that you're not going to have an infinite amount. So you want to make sure you get a good one. I'll do it. I'll show you. So I ended up getting base attack damage. I got some extra attack damage. Sure, that works pretty good on my character. She does quite a few of them. Um, but I can still get the main stats. I can still level them up, and I can still get set bonuses going for free. But it is not a system where it's completely energyless or resourceless. You still have to put in some some um, resources. And they are going to be finite, and you can't progress uh, infinitely. So, when I look at all the different systems, this is not revolutionary. The, the overall game is going to have some similarities and familiar moments. You're going to be like, oh, this is just more Genshin. And for some people, that's really good. And for me, I think because the combat is interesting enough, these enemies are interesting um, enough. Let me just switch to a different party because it'll be cooler. Um, I think that overall, all their different skills and like this is a gun guy. He feels like pretty cool. He's got some cool attacks. It's fun just using new characters. And trying new things. And 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 I want to show you something really interesting. So let me just fight this enemy for a, uh, a little bit here. Um, so I can show you this cool move. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting shit on already. Nice. Okay. So I can use my animals and like go in here and attack. Pretty cool. But look at this. I can use her attack and use my other guy, and she'll stay on the field. There's some really interesting things where you can trigger an attack and the other person stays on the field. Or this guy, he will actually join in and just like appear and do an attack sometimes. And uh, what I didn't anticipate was with the combat, the the swapping feature and, and doing these little, these little attacks. Like I'll, I'll just wait till it procs one. One second here. Maybe I have to use my ultimate. When it procs it, 
Okay, I can summon in this other person and, and switch to her and do like this, this chain attack, this combo attack. I love the feeling of it. It's such a simple thing. But each character has their own rotations and have their own abilities. She has like a, a charge meter. You, you use your attacks and then you consume all the charge and she does this big nuke. Um, everyone has their own vibe. This girl, um, you know, she's a healer. This girl, you alternate between all your different attacks and then she does like a, an AoE, like venti alt kind of thing. And you want to use them. You want to play through them. You want to use their, their skills. But then swapping out to the other people can also trigger different effects. It can boost up your next unit's damage. It could debuff the enemy. All these different things. And so you you kind of want to have each person on field do their combo and then you swap off. And I don't know. It just feels fun. I've swapped teams 500 different times in Genshin. But for some reason, it feels very satisfying in this game. And I don't know why. Zenless Zone Zero did similar stuff. You can swap between, they can do some attacks. But from minute one, Zenless Zone Zero felt like button mashing. A little bit. Like a little, a little bit. And from moment one in this one, I was having fun. The spectacle was there. But I think it's because the bosses can actually crush you if you're not playing well. Like, I was missing a bunch of the counters there. I still need to practice that stuff. Some of the enemies can absolutely dumpster on you. And, and these are arguably the easier versions. As you go to the world tiers, they get stronger. They get more aggressive. And in some of the other content, they get harder. And so the combat is very fun. Switching between the characters is very fun. I like this. But it's using them against something that's also trying to kill me is what excites me. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I think that the overworld, the questing, all that stuff is, is like, you know, pretty cool, pretty interesting. But I want to show you this really quickly. I'm going to just go into my um, my videos here quickly because I, I did a recording here. Um, this, is, this is from earlier. Let me just move this over. Okay. This is from earlier. All right. It might be some spoilers. But if I look at this cutscene, if I look at what's going on, I don't think you can tell me like, oh, this is trash compared to Genshin. It's like, what? This looks insane. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Um, it might not be your favorite art style. It might not be the, the best storytelling long term. But the cutscenes are very solid. And I want to talk about this very importantly because I know lore for some people isn't is 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 big. This this guy that that we're dealing with here, I ran into him earlier and he had a big discussion about this little town. And they were using wishes and this shepherd came. But the shepherd was ominous. It was this god that was a, that was taking advantage of these these sheep. All right? This flock and they were sacrificing themselves to get their wishes, and it was this vicious trend. And eventually there was a black sheep, all right, that spoke up against it. And what did they want to do? They wanted to, to kill him and say, no, we want to keep doing this, this vicious cycle. And he, he told us this story. And I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. It's fine. Like, it's interesting lore. But we talked to him, and, she, and, and, and our character said, so were you the shepherd? And he says, no, I'm the black sheep. And so are you. And I was like, okay. I don't know what that means exactly. But then I ended up fighting him later on in the story. And I thought that this was pretty interesting. And it was a cool fight. And there was a situation where if he grabs you, he like does this crazy combo, like a fighting combo. It was cool. I love it. Like if he if he hits you, you're going to be in some trouble. And um, it was fun. And then another phase started. I, I, I did some damage and another phase started. And I want to talk about this because I think it's very important for this video. Number one, animations look really cool. Number two, though, what pops out of this hole? What is that logo? What is that symbol? What are we seeing other than a black sheep, a black lamb? And I feel like even that homage to the earlier quest and talking about that is interesting. I think that it shows that they have some thought behind the story. I'm not going to pretend it's this amazing thing, but I would argue that some of Genshin's story is very boring, and I'm like, skip, 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 and then at the very end of a quest, I'm like, oh, that was good. There's a crazy cutscene. Oh, that was good. 
And it might be the same here, but at least I'm seeing some inclination that they have some cohesion to the story. They have some interest in the story and um, I'm excited for it. I might still skip a whole bunch of it, but if there's some cool moments and some cool cutscenes, I think that that's a win. I'm not going to pretend it's this insane story that's just better than Genshin, but like at least it's not terrible. <laughs> and if it is, there's going to be a skip button for like everything. So it is what it is, but visually if we start looking at the cutscenes if we look at some of the stuff that's that's available in game you can't tell me this doesn't look good some of the music that pops in during these fights like it looks freaking awesome i'm very impressed uh with a lot of it i think that the game is going to be good and i think that for the first month or two people are going to be shocked and hyped and and and, and they are going to quit genshin for a month and they're going to be like oh I'm, I'm going all in in withering waves and then they might quit because maybe they don't, they, they can't hold on to it. Maybe they can't hold on to the magic. But, um, my, my vibe right now is, I think it'll be a fun game. It'll be something that I personally will go all in on when it launches. I will be making so many guides. I see so much potential for it. And if it only lasts a month or two, it is what it is. But I see a game that I'm enjoying and I like. And... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ride that wave. I'm gonna ride that wave. Now, another final thing I do want to address is gotcha. Okay, it's a gotcha game. Some people hate this. Some people somehow love it. I hate it. I always hate it. I I don't know who I'm gonna get, but at the same time, there's some magic to that as well because it's kind of like a rogue like game. I don't know who I'm gonna get. I don't know when I'm gonna get that weapon. I don't know who I'm gonna get for my first free. Uh, five-star unit and because of that and and the adapting to that it is kind of fun and it's novel and i would say that the first month or two of these gotcha games is when they're the most fun when it's just dailies all the time it starts to get less fun and so it might be a flash in the pan it might be just a quick thing that we enjoy and maybe that's okay but there's a few things is kuro games is known for being a little bit more um, generous, free five star when PGR launched for global, uh, quite a few pulls when it launched overall. In this one, you get a free five star, just like HSR off the normal banner. Like there's like a, the guaranteed one, uh, which is cool and everything, but it, it appears that they've done some things with the events and everything to help you get your account up and running relatively quickly. You can still get destroyed by the gotcha. There's still a 50, 50 on this banner. But the weapon banner doesn't have a 50-50. On top of that, hypothetically, because of the, the shop that's available, um, like the free the free pulls you got. Okay, there we go. Ooh, wow. Um, there's free pulls every month that you can get from this on the normal banner, the weapon banner, and the character banner. So hypothetically, long term, you should have some weapons, even though you don't actually spend any money on the game or pull on that specifically. Over time, you will eventually hit pity, and it's going to be a long time, but eventually you'll get some crazy weapon on this banner. And it's like, oh, that's amazing. Or you get a bunch of blues. You know, you get a bunch of blues, it is what it is. But I think that the systems overall look fine. Like, it is it is what it is, but there's going to be a lot of this, like every other gacha game. What sets it apart for me, or at least has some potential, is with the normal wishes, with the free pulls that you get, that's one thing. However... You start putting all the other normal pulls in, cool. Free five-star weapon. They're not the best weapons, but still, it is, it's like one more thing. And, and I don't know exactly what will be in the game for the launch. But hypothetically, there could be more. Because there's nothing on here that says, like, pre-order pulls. And, and, and a lot of these gacha games do do that. I haven't seen anything about pre-registrations, pre-order, how many people have, have signed up... We got 5 million signups. Here's a free 5-star. Nothing. I haven't seen anything like that. And so that could still be coming on top of all these different things. There's a free character you can get from doing the Abyss type stuff. And, and, and like, I don't know. I think, I think you can get your account up and running relatively simple. And if you want to throw 5 bucks at the Battle Pass or whatever, then, you know, do your thing. But I think I'll probably play it free-to-play because I just like that vibe. I don't like spending money. It ruins the game for me. Um, but I'm sitting on... I think Withering Waves is going to be good. I have a feeling it's going to be good. 
People are complaining about the difficulty, even though no one is in the end game yet. No one has any idea what the end game looks like yet, officially. Um, people are complaining about the story. Maybe it's trash. For me, I don't care. I don't like Genshin Impact a lot of the time because it's so much yapping. It's not interesting to me. I do not want to go on a date with Ayaka. I do not care even 1%, but some people love that. Genshin is not for me. When I started that game, I thought it was going to go in a completely different direction, and it is just over time, time and time again said, no, 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 this is not for you. We will make a card game before a new boss. We will make hangouts before anything. It's not for me. And Wuthering Waves might not be for you. But if you're someone like me that likes combat, I'm hoping that they nail it. I, I, I have a, a vibe, a feel that they're going to, to nail it. And if they don't, that sucks. But for right now, optimism is higher than expected. I was worried about it. I was nervous about it. But I can't wait. The other thing I want to discuss, the final thing is... We don't know when it's going to launch. So if we're looking at this stuff and it's like, oh, this looks really good. Well, it, it might launch in a month, but it also might launch in like, it might launch in like October because that's when their, their like licenses do or whatever it's called. So all this stuff might still be iterated upon. And they, they've done dev talks about how much they've changed things. They might make the, the, the map more dense. Maybe they up the difficulty of some of these bosses in the early game. I don't know what they do. I have I have no idea. Um, But if, if, if they cook for another eight months and they, they make it even better? Damn. Damn, boy. It's a Genshin killer. 